Magnus Carlsen is still the strongest chess player in the world, beyond any doubt. And one of the most important skills to be very good at chess, to be successful, is finding resources. So whenever you're in a lost position, winning position, you always need to try to find ways to get the most out of your position. And here in this video, I'm going to show you a game played by Magnus Carlsen, in which he didn't have an easy time at all, but he comes up with something absolutely incredible. What it is, you will find out in a couple of minutes, but it's fantastic. It's spectacular and maybe one of the best swindles of the year. Let me show you what happened, but one favor, please subscribe to the channel and uh, become a follower to follow all my videos. You can even like this video. You can also consider making a small PayPal donation. Thanks for all the support and I will keep delivering, finding the most spectacular games from the best players in the world and also show you a trick which you uh, can also use in uh, some of your own games, hopefully at some point. Here we go. Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces. Title Tuesday, he's white against the strong uh, grandmaster, Sergei Lobanov. It's a blitz game. Three minutes, one second increment. So we are going fast through the game to the uh, to the key moment. Magnus with white, one e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. It's the Italian opening, knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, d3, bishop c5, all standard. Now different ways of playing. You can uh, go for the setups with c3. It's considered to be the most ambitious move. But another good way of playing is just developing your other knight to c3. So Magnus, as always, is applying the golden rules um, very, uh, very well. Black goes for the move a6. May look like a strange move, but whenever the bishop comes under threat, it may even uh, drop back to a7, for instance. But white goes a4. May look also a bit uh, strange, but grabbing space is usually something uh, really worth something at, uh, at the highest level. But... Um, well, I can understand if you don't feel like playing such a move, but there are other good moves of playing as well. It's all very subtle. Let's go through the opening. Black goes h6, another pawn move. Bishop e3. This is interesting. I always recommend this kind of idea to uh, to my students. When you're new to the game, this is a good way of trying um, to complete your development. Because the idea is that after a bishop takes, pawn takes. Black goes d6, for instance. Now you're going to castle and you do have a nice half open file for your rook with a bishop and uh, rook eyeing that uh, king. You are looking for tactical opportunities, maybe to get a queen around to g3 and uh, look for ways to build up an attack. But Magnus plays a little bit different. I mean, black castled here first and Magnus plays it in a more positional manner. He fixes the queen side here with the move a5. Bishop e6 is played, so now black is of course also ready to swap bishops and in case you take, black recaptures with a pawn. But first b3 is played, interesting move. If you take on c4, white recaptures towards the center and this pawn block in the center gives white a massive grip on, uh, on that part of the board. I like it uh, for white and there are even ideas later on to target this backward pawn on uh, b7, or even jump in with a knight to, uh, to d5, for instance. So, in any case, black is not going to take on c4. Black played here, knight d7. And now white goes queen e1. So you can see, white is trying to implement that idea I already mentioned, looking for attacking possibilities on the king side. But black goes knight b4, hitting the pawn on c2. Queen goes back to defend the pawn. And here black is grabbing space himself on that side of the board with a move c5. And uh, well, not, not so simple to, uh, to do something with white. White came up with this idea, knight d1. He felt like knight is not doing too much. And the knight probably wants to go to b2. And if bishops are ever getting swapped, you have a nice square on c4 for your uh, knight as the pawn also um, is uh, controlling any uh, pawn break like b7, b5. You think white is... Uh, preventing it, and then it is played anyway. b5 on the board, pawn takes b6, knight takes b6, and here bishops are coming off the board as well, and the knight comes to b2. So what should we think of this position? Maybe nothing too spectacular, one open file, one half open file for white here. Maybe the pawn on a5, a6 can become a target later on, but it uh, looks like black is absolutely fine here. Black played the move a5, and after the move c3, Knight goes back to uh, to c6, and white breaks in the center with the move uh, d4. 
if everything gets swapped, looks like white is uh, having a very active uh, position with potential uh, play against the weaknesses on d6 and e6. But black doesn't have to react. Played here the move, rook b8. And here you see that the pawn on b3 is unprotected and black is eyeing that pawn. Pawn takes c5, d takes c5. Interesting moment. How to proceed here? I guess that's something like queen e2, keeping queens on the board with ideas even to come to, uh, to b5 and uh, try to put pressure against these uh, isolated pawns. They are separated. You can target them with your queen. But Magnus, as very often, also in blitz games, but also in classical games, he, uh, he, he likes to, to play this queenless middle games and games. So he swaps the queens here. He even gives up the, um, the open file. But as you can see, white is controlling all the entry squares. So the black rook is unable to make use of it. There's no reason to contest the open file here. White played rook fc1. So that uh, the rook is uh, supporting here. And uh, who knows, uh, maybe the, the king can come at, uh, at some point. But now things are getting very, uh, very interesting. As Lobanov is not going to sit and wait. This is kind of strategy you often see. Uh, weaker players, they play against somebody who is a huge favorite. They play solid. But you should play your, uh, your own game. Like you're playing a much weaker player and try to get most out of your position. And the next move is very instructive. It's a pawn sacrifice. Pawn c4 is uh, played. And the main point is to move this uh, b-pawn from the board. And uh, then you have just created a passed pawn your, yourself. I mean, probably taking with the b-pawn here is, is actually the best. And it will not be that simple for black to uh, come forward with the a-pawn. But Magnus instead decided to take here with a knight. Knight takes c4, knight takes c4, b takes c4. And here the rook comes in. To, uh, to b2. Looks super active. Still, the knight is controlling the d2 square, so the second rook is unable to join. But white played here the move uh, rook b1. The other rook comes in, uh, supporting the rook on b2, so one pair of rooks getting exchanged. But how to evaluate this position? I mean, the situation is quite remarkable because white has two isolated double pawns. Black has one pair of isolated uh, double pawns. But this double pawns on the c file they cannot come further. The knight on c6 is a great blockader. It supports the pawn on, uh, on a5. And imagine a black pawn will reach a2. Then all of a sudden you have serious ideas to uh, promote it with uh, moves like rook b1. But also for now, the rook on the second rank is cutting off the king. Looks like, practically speaking, white is in trouble. King f1 played. Black played rook b3. So black is thinking about winning the pawn on uh, c3, maybe winning another pawn as uh, as well. You can you can see all these pawns uh, dropping at uh, at some point. But rook c1 is played, so defending the pawn on c3. But now the rook is no longer stopping the a pawn. And look, a4 is played. King e2, rook b2 check. The king comes to the center, and this is interesting uh, moment as well. So the king is now taking over the defensive task of the rook, but gives up the pawn on g2. If you do take on g2. It's still razor sharp. This was not played by black in the game. And the reason is that with a move like c5 and intending to go king c4, and maybe even king b5, the king starts to uh, participate actively. And um, it could be that white is even going to take over. So you have to be careful. Black is not interested in these pawns on the, on the king side. And played here the move a3. Very understandable and good move. The pawn is on its way to a2. And now the most natural reaction, especially in the blitz game, is to stop the pawn with the move rook a1. Apparently, this is not such a good move. Not obvious why. But after this move a2, the rook is stuck. Cannot go away. If it ever moves, there will be a rook b1 and black is going to promote the pawn. But white played here the move c5. And what should black do? How should black try to make progress here? That is the main question. If Magnus would have been playing this position from the black side, I am pretty sure he would have found the correct move. He would have played king f7, activate the king. White has already activated the king. And that's, that's very important uh, to use your king. The king may come over to the queen side, so enabling the knight to move or just protect the pawn on uh, e5 so that the... Um, uh, knight from c6 can uh, easily move without giving up the pawn there. Why is this such a good move? Now, for instance, if you 
try to do something like c4 with the idea to go king c3 and bring the king over there is knight before check and now king c3 is met by rook b1 and here the knight is supporting the pawn on a2 a2 defends the rook the rook on a1 cannot be defended so black is winning this position let's go back this is one line there are many many other lines as well we are not going to analyze it but white is completely busted here now you want to see what happened in the game this is absolutely incredible because the move played by Lobanov is very understandable he sees this opportunity he goes knight a5 and his idea is very similar now the roles of the knight and the rook are reversed as the rook defends the pawn the knight is coming in to b3 to hit the rook the rook gotta go away and then you promote the pawn you win a rook game over look at this here it's starting knight takes e5 super interesting move you're just taking the pawn giving black the chance just to play this move knight b3 i mean otherwise black's in the last move knight a5 doesn't make sense at all but now there is this move c6 white is finally running with his own pawn as well if black had first activated his own king this pawn would not have been dangerous but now the black king is too far away and what can black do he can only capture on a1 but then there is the move c7 and the pawn is out of reach the black rook cannot give a check not a good one at least cannot go back to b8 to stop the pawn you can just take the rook so what to play the knight goes back to b3 white is even promoting with check so white is now for the moment a queen up but after king h7 the king is out of checks and on the next move black is going to push the pawn promote the pawn get a new queen and then black is still a rook up so what what can what can white do is white able to to save this well if you for instance take a pawn and look for some checks here on g6 there is knight c5 with a knight fork you're winning the queen and then next move you're still promoting your your a pawn so that's not going to work but look at this now magnus stands up the goat knight f7 he's just going all in and you should understand it's still a blitz game that hasn't changed and uh, both players are now down to seconds i think both players had like eight or nine seconds left at, at this point and the move played is so logical because you see knight f7 and you feel like there's only one check but there followed the move a1 queen and now queen h8 check king g6 attacking the knight but the knight comes back to e5 this is always difficult these backward checks going back to the square it came from it's check and where can the king go there are not that many options if you go to f6 then you can play queen f8 with check if you take the knight there is queen to f4 with checkmate look at these beautiful double pawns thanks to the support of these pawns and the king it is actually checkmate fantastic and well the alternative is to go uh, to the other side with your king not to take the knight but there is queen f4 king h5 queen g4 is also checkmate so we see here a brilliant cooperation between queen and knight they are each other's best friends and there's no way out apparently for uh, for black king h5 was uh, was played and now you should keep going if you don't give a check it's black who starts giving checks and it will be made in a few moves but queen e8 is the way to finish off the game very good king g5 is met by queen g6 the knight is protecting the queen king h4 queen g4 with checkmate so instead of king to g5 king g4 is not possible because the knight is covering the square king h4 is played now you have to be very careful the automatic check g3 going after the king trying to force the king to to move up the board it runs into king h3 and after queen h5 king g2 you have one more check on f3 but then it's touched down king g1 and there are no more checks this is winning for for black but you gotta be precise and pause here for a second there is another super important check and that is the the move knight f3 knight f3 check the king has only one square king g4 and now it's queen g6 with checkmate all these pawns are helping in the mating attack pawns are taking away squares the pawn on g2 is even defending the knight and the queen is giving a check this is absolutely amazing if you see this final position you cannot imagine it's coming from this game we, we have seen a queenless middle game in which magnus was basically getting outplayed because of that uh, of, because of that a pawn things are very incredibly dangerous but this is what 
separates the strongest players from good players is that you see a move, you see that Black is trying to do something with a knight, but you smell blood. You see that you have chances yourself. Knight takes e5, followed by pushing the c-pawn. It was just an incredible resource. And I mean, okay, objectively speaking, in this uh, forced sequence, Black should not have uh, made a new queen. There are different ways of playing. For instance, one interesting line here is rook takes g2. And if we compare that with, with the game, queen h8, king g6, knight e5, there is king h5. And the big difference is that now after queen e8 check, you can play g6 and the rook is defending the pawn. There's no mate. It's still incredibly difficult. Apparently you can still hold on here with queen f7. And if you now promote to a new, a new queen, there is queen f3 check, king uh, to h4 and you can take the rook and the game goes on it's super complicated i think it was uh, bodwinik the uh, legendary uh, former world champion in the back uh, 70 years ago 80 years ago uh, who said you should never analyze blitz games so i i want to respect the game here as well we should not go too deeply but it's also just beautiful to to see how what what the, the thought process is of uh, of these players at uh, at such an incredible difficult moment being down to two seconds I think a1 queen is such a logical move. It's the losing move, but um, well, just absolutely a stunning, a stunning uh, play from from both uh, sides. In fact, so hopefully you like this video. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll be back very soon. Bye bye.